Hello, friends. Okay, so I think this is episode 50. Is it about comfort? Yes, that's the title, but it not, might not be all about comfort. Just saying. We'll see as we go through this. You know, every day it feels like I learn more and more about my journey with God. You know, it's not just about my weight loss journey anymore. It's it's really, and it never was, just about my weight loss journey, even though in my little mind I probably thought that at one time. It's really about everything that life encompasses. Every single detail affects my entire journey of becoming a whole, healthy, happy woman. And to be whole means all of me is affected. All of me has to become new. All of me has to uh, become healthy. All of me has to become healthy. My body, my mind, my emotions, my desires, my spirit, everything that encompasses who I am has to become healthy and happy for me to be whole. What I learn in one area is going to affect the other area. And what happens in one area will affect the other areas as well. You know, <clears throat> I love all the various versions and translations of the Bible. And if you've followed me for any time, you've probably figured that out. I, I use a lot of various translations when I do graphic posts over on my Facebook page, Teresa Shields Parker, and I use it here in the podcast and I use it in my coaching group. It just helps me bring more clarity to what the Bible is saying. But there's one thing I've always loved about King James, and that's that it calls the Holy Spirit the Comforter. For years, I didn't understand why other versions used other words to describe the Holy Spirit. I mean, he's the comforter. I love that title. When I began my weight loss journey, knowing that he is my comforter really made all the difference in the world. It was like the one thread that I clung to because for me, my journey was all about comfort. Without comfort... I didn't feel I could go forward because I knew I was using food to comfort me and to anesthetize all of my negative emotions, trauma or pain from the past or anything that bugged me. <laughs> so understanding that he is my comforter helped me immensely. Recently, though, I have come to understand and realize a profound truth. Comfort. <laughs> Comfort, that thing we need, that thing we long for, is really a pretty selfish thing when you come right down to it. It's all about what I want, what I need, what I want in order to not feel a bad emotion, so I run to food. It's all about me. It's all about my needs. I want to celebrate, you know, so I indulge in my favorite food. I want a pity party, so I binge on various sugary treats that put me in a food coma so I don't have to think about anything negative or bad. I wanted comfort, and the most immediate, tangible thing I could think of was food because it was always there, always readily available. Why? Because I, <laughs> I made it be available. And when I finally went on my weight loss journey in earnest, I began to understand that the Holy Spirit wants to fill my need for comfort. He wants to take me to new places in Him. And going to Him instead of fo food really began to give me a new perspective on who He is and what He really means in my life. So these days, it's all about me staying true to my journey since I've lost 250 pounds. So comfort is a given, but my eyes have been opened to understand 
how all the other names of the Holy Spirit are even more important to me than the Comforter. Yes, he will comfort me and he will comfort you. That's one of his best jobs. He does a good job at it. But I'm seeing my need to grow up in him to realize how much more than that he is to me and wants to be to me. I need comfort. We all do. But even more than comfort, I need him in every role he wants to take in my life. And Sometimes we're scared of going there with the Holy Spirit, but stay with me. They're, these roles are not scary, okay? Uh, John fourteen twenty six is the passage where Jesus tells his disciples that he is leaving, but he will send them the Holy Spirit in his place. And like I said, King James Version, also American Standard Version and the Living Bible refer to him there in, in John fourteen twenty six as the Comforter. Um, New International calls him the Advocate. New Living calls him uh, the Advocate as Jesus' representative. Uh, English Standard and New King James calls him the Helper. The Passion Translation calls him the Spirit of Holiness. The Message calls him the Friend. The Common English Bible calls him the Companion. Phillips calls him the Teacher. Uh, Revised Standard calls him the Counselor. So there's so many other versions call him various names. But the Amplified, I think, really summarizes all of these. So John 14, 26 in the Amplified says, But the Helper, Comforter, Advocate, Intercessor, Counselor, Strengthener, Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf, he will lead you into all things, and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. So the point is, the Holy Spirit doesn't have just one facet. He is multifaceted. And if you put all of the other versions together, we need to add that he is our friend and our teacher and our companion and Jesus representative to us and the spirit of holiness. He is all of these things and more. He is what we need most in the moment we are in. This is why going to him works so much better to help us than indulging in something that only harms us. When we go to food for comfort, it works maybe in the moment, but later it's very discomforting, especially when we realize what we've done to ourselves. It doesn't bring us the peace that we were after or that we wanted because comfort, when you boil it down, is really what we're looking for is peace. It's Comfort is really an interesting word because when we dissect it, what we are really saying is really selfish because it's all about what we want and nothing about what God wants for us. He's calling me and you to go much, much deeper with him. He's calling us to come up a level. And that's kind of scary as well, right? He is calling us to transformation, to change. And he's using our issues with food to do it. So it's not just about what we look like. It's not just about how much we weigh. It's about how closely we are walking with him, hearing from him, following him, doing what he wants. He's redefining what comfort looks like and feels like for us. It's about the comfort and the peace of mind that comes when we know we're doing exactly what God's heart's desire is for us in order to take us to that place that he wants us to go in him. So this is really what it means to grow up in him. 
and to embrace all the facets of who he is. You know, there are times we just need a friend and a companion to talk to. We can talk to the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus sent to be with us in his place. Now, not only does he understand what we're going through, he will also lead and guide us through it. On our journeys, life's going to happen, okay? We can't stop it from happening. Some of it is awesome, and so we feel like we're living in heaven on earth, and then something tragic happens. Maybe like the current state of the world, we're in a pretty tragic state right now. And But maybe you think, well, you know, I'm making it through. I'm just staying home, being a good girl, you know, <laughs> wearing masks when I should, all of the nice and the right things. <sighs> it's not so bad until someone we know contracts um, the virus, the COVID-19 virus, or even happens to pass away from being exposed to the virus or has their life taken in a senseless shooting that seems to have no rhyme or reason, or worse yet, a child takes their life and our world seems to crash and burn, or a spouse or a family member passes away and we couldn't be with them, we couldn't be there because of all the restrictions. And we wonder, where are you, God? Where's the Holy Spirit now that I need him? No matter what happens, though, even it's, if it's something like the loss of a job, difficulty in a marriage or relationship, or just a really, really no good very bad, horrible day. We need, we, we, we need to go to the Holy Spirit. But what we tend to do is go to the thing we think solves our immediate problem, which is the emotional pain that we think we can't take any longer. So many times on my journey, I railed at God. I really did. You know, I, would, I would say things to him like, why do I have to stop eating sugar when everyone else can eat it? Seemed like everybody else could. I didn't know anybody else who was doing what I was doing, who was giving up sugar or who had to give up sugar. I didn't like having to do it. And I told him it's not fair. It hurts too much. It's like ripping a Band-Aid off an open, oozing wound. And how can you expect me to get through this, God? And all the time, His Holy Spirit was speaking softly to me. Just come to me. I'm here with you. I'm in the midst of your struggles. I'm here to guide you, to advocate for you. I will show you the way. I'm here to help you learn how to cope with yourself. We all need that, my friends. I have the power to strength and the strength you need to go forward. Everything you need, I have. There are things you would never learn unless you allow me to help you face the pain of your past. And that's where most of our issues lie, my friends. It's only in facing those issues that you can live in the present and begin to look forward toward the future. I'm here. I've got you. And I love hearing him say those things to me. And if you take time to listen to really listen to what he's trying to say to you, he will speak to you as well. Comfort for me was the fact that God was with me through my struggles. What I'm learning, though, is that comfort may not be the right word. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was much more of a counselor to me than a comforter. When I look back and when I see 
what was really happening. It wasn't comforting to have to change, you know, to have to do a complete, what, what really felt like a complete 180 and change. It wasn't comforting to give up the thing that my puny little mind had convinced me was the very thing I needed to get through this world. I had to learn how to cope with myself without running to my drug of choice, which was any food made with sugar and or flour. But Jesus is the one who knows me best. So scripture tells me he was tempted in every way like I have been and like I am now because we're all still tempted even though I can resist those temptations now. It still doesn't mean I'm not tempted because I am. So he is here with me in the person of the Holy Spirit. He speaks to me softly. He did that even in the midst of my ranting, raving, and rebellion against him. I see now that all God wanted for me was for me to just grow in him. He wants me to come of age in him, to grow up, to understand that he is more than comfort. He is the one who counsels me and helps me understand my best course of action. He is the one who leads and guides me when I get lost and veer off course, which can happen even these days. He is the one who strengthens me with power when I am weak, which is pretty much all the time. He helps me to keep going. He is always there, a standby that I can rely on. He's my intercessor and advocate before the Father in heaven. His goal, his mission, his desire It's to show me the way to the next level in him. Now, many of us see this Christian thing kind of like join a, joining a club, you know, joining a social group or something like that. But it's much more than joining anything here on earth or even walking the aisle and shaking the preacher's hand. It's having your name permanently engraved in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's knowing that every step you take and every decision you make is integral to your life's mission. It's about progressively changing and growing up in God. You know, at the end of Matthew 5, which is Matthew 5 is where Jesus gives the people the Beatitudes and many other basic tips for how to live the Christian life. At the end, in Matthew 5, 48, he says something that sounds really impossible. He tells us to be perfect. Now, that's how it's translated in most versions of the Bible. But the Amplified Version gives us new insight into that scripture. It says, you, therefore, will be perfect, and then it defines perfect, growing into spiritual maturity, both in mind and character, actively integrating godly values into your daily life as your Father in heaven is perfect. So he's telling that, that what he, he's telling us there that what he wants for us is to be growing and changing and transforming, not stuck in the lies that grow into strongholds that we can't handle. He wants us to get to the place where going deeper with him or rising to new levels in him becomes our only goal. And when we are forced to face some of life's most difficult questions, it will take us deep. So maybe the deepest question you are facing right now is how to stop yourself from what you know is a slow death by comfort food. Because I was there and I understand that. But maybe there are other difficult questions thrown in there too. I just want to encourage you not to be upset by that. 
not to be upset by the fact that you're faced with some difficult questions. Because most people are never invited to grapple with life's difficult questions. And so they never grow. It's when we are forced to face these issues that we will grow and get deeper meanings of who God is and who we are in Him. We'll either grow or we'll go backwards, one of the other. But it's really okay and it's really what God wants for us to wrestle with Him, to grapple with the difficult issues like Jacob wrestled with the angel of God. It's okay to let him know, let God know that you need answers. After Jacob's struggle, God gave him a new name. He gave him the name Israel. So Jacob means deceiver. Israel means triumphant with God or contender with God. And giving, given a choice between the two, I would definitely take Israel. So whatever issues that you are going through, God wants to bring newness out of it for you. Having to lose the amount of weight that I lost was not a fun journey, okay? It just wasn't. It wasn't what I would choose. It wasn't the way I would choose to become new in God, to grow up in God. But God has changed me in ways I never dreamed possible through this journey. Some of those ways involve a whole lot more than just my physical body looking differently. The 2 Corinthians 5.17 in the Amplified says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed, by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. So I've had this conversation with my husband many times about when I really became a Christian. <clears throat> Was it when I was seven and stole candy from the grocery store and invited Jesus into my heart so I wouldn't go to hell? I didn't want to burn. I knew about that. I didn't sound like fun. But you know, and it was, it was real. I accepted Jesus. It was a turnaround time of sorts, but there wasn't much difference between me at age seven and age eight. Not much was made new. I had the assurance that I was going to heaven and I never again stole from the grocery store, but that was about it. But when I was 55 and surrendered sugar to God, that was a totally different experience. That was when I laid what I felt like was my entire reason for living on God's altar. That's when I gave every part of myself to him. That's when I handed him my previous moral and spiritual condition and said, I don't want to do life like this anymore. I want to be stuck in bondage to food and sugar addiction. I need to understand your way of doing things. I need to be awakened spiritually so I can allow you, God, to take charge of my physical well-being and show me how to live reborn and renewed by your Holy Spirit. Oh, my friend, it's about so much more than comfort. So much more. I so want you to get that message. It's about growing up in God. Even at age 55, I was still a baby in Christ. Even after <laughs> leading many different Christian 
organizations and serving on boards of directors and being a, a regional newspaper publisher, I was still a baby in Christ. I needed to trade my selfish desires for the and the you know the the comfort I felt for certain foods and accept the comfort of the Holy Spirit first. And then I had to learn to crawl, to stand, to walk, and to run with him towards the destiny he had planned for me from the beginning of time. Now, I also often wish, you know, that I could have followed him completely back in 1977 when he told me exactly what to do in order to um, to prevent what eventually happened to me, and that was gaining up to 430 pounds, he knew my stubbornness. Even at even then, he had planned a way to help me lose the weight and bring me back to him, all the way back to him. When I was ready, but I had to be ready. He could not force that on me, and he won't force it on you either. I'm just sorry it took me so long for me to get to the place where I could return to my first love. Love that new song of Carrie Jobs, by the way, First Love. Great song. I'm so glad I did it. And you can too. He's calling you to come back to him. He's calling you to trust him with whatever issue is most on your heart and mind today. And I feel there are many issues out there that I'm speaking to. It may not just be one. It's whatever is most on your heart and mind today. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, we lay all our heartaches and pains at your feet. We don't ask for you to change our circumstances. We just ask for you to be a companion and guide to get us through to the next level that you have for us. We ask you to counsel us and show us what to do next. We ask you to guide us and lead us in the way you want us to go. We want to grow up in you, God. We want to serve you. Show us how to follow you completely. And we surrender anew to you today in Jesus' name. I so love you, my friend. Please let me know if you need my help. Overcomers Academy is the best place to find me. Doors are still open. Breaking Strongholds is still available for you to join in. And the link for Overcomers will be down in the show notes. But remember this, whatever happens, I'm praying for you and I'm in the stands rooting for you. Sweet grace for your journey.